Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course where you will learn how to design steel connections in STAD Pro using RAM connection. In this video, we will focus on designing our beam column flange connections to resist our moment or fixed end reactions. We will now turn our attention back to the sample model that is supplied with this training course. In the previous video, we assigned shear connections to all of the beam column flange joints. What you will notice, however, is that several of the beams framing into the beam column flange joints were analyzed as fixed, meaning that there is a moment reaction that must also be resisted through a connection design. So let's begin our workflow by selecting all of the beam column flange joints where the beams were detailed as fixed. To start this process, we're going to go to the connection design tab in our ribbon toolbar, click on the select joints pull down menu, and then this time we are going to select the select special joints option. We are still designing beam column flange joints and this time we're going to tell the program that we would like to filter the selection based on those joints that have fixed end beams. We'll finish this off by clicking OK and then STAD Pro has identified the joints that will need a moment connection. We are now going to return to the connection design tab in our ribbon toolbar and select our smart connection workflow. We're going to select a connection template that is capable of resisting moment forces. And for this model, we're going to select a directly welded beam column flange connection template. We will grab the directly welded template, move it over to the selected area, and then we'll finish this off by clicking OK. Now the program will be asking you if you would like to replace the connections that are already assigned to these joints. We are going to select no to all because we do not want to override the shear connections that were already assigned to these joints. We have a shear reaction and a moment reaction, so therefore we're going to assign two different templates to the same joints to make sure that all of the reactions at the ends of these members have been taken care of through a connection design. In the RAM connection validation dialog, we're going to scroll down and we're going to notice that 69 connections have been assigned. We do not have a note saying that any connection wasn't assigned. So then we're going to proceed to review the status of each assigned connection. Now we do have one connection design that is indicated that con the connection design did not work. We'll go ahead and click close and then we'll scroll down in our dialog and we'll see that the directly welded beam column flange template was assigned to each of the joints and we do have one joint which is indicated in red and it has an interaction ratio greater than 1.0. Now if you run into a scenario where you have an error or a warning that was produced by a connection design you may find that you would like to edit that connection manually. To do that we'll go ahead and double click on that connection to bring us back to our connection pad. Now let's go ahead and take a closer in-depth look at the connection pad for this exercise. The first thing we're going to notice is in the main window we have a couple different views we can take a look at. I can rotate the 3D view by holding down my right mouse button. I could also zoom in and out if I would choose. And I can also take a look at the DXF view of this connection. If I look over in the data area at the left hand side, I'm going to see a number of parameters that are associated with this particular selected connection. Now what we're going to notice is that several of the parameters have a small blue arrow symbol adjacent to it. This indicates that this parameter may be modified and verified through the connection pad, but it won't be saved once the connection pad is closed. The majority of these parameters will affect their STAD Pro analysis. So if you find that anything such as beam material or beam section should change, you should go back to the STAD Pro analytical modeling mode, make that change to ensure that your analysis results are consistent with your connection design.
Any of the other parameters which don't have a blue arrow may be modified in the connection pad and saved to that particular joint. Now let's go ahead and get some more information on why this joint failed the code check. To do that, I'm going to start with my report for this particular connection. And to access the report, I'm going to click on the results icon in the ribbon. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find that my top local flange bending has failed the code check. Now over in the data area, I have a couple of different options that I can pursue to get a passing connection design. If I choose to increase my column size to avoid this type of error, again, I'm going to want to go back to my analytical modeling mode, adjust the column size, and then come back to RAM connection and see if a directly welded connection without reinforcement would satisfy the code check. My other option is to add either transverse stiffeners or I can add some column web panel zone stiffeners if needed. Now the program won't automatically add reinforcement to a directly welded joint or connection. So if your joint needs some reinforcement, it will come up with an error during the preliminary connection design. And then you can manually add these types of elements through the connection pad. For this exercise, I'm going to assume that I would like to add some transverse stiffeners. So I'm going to go ahead and add that information. I'm going to add some stiffeners on both sides. Now I'll notice as I select different parameters through the data area that a help window at the bottom of my screen will be appearing to give me more information on the currently selected parameters. If I don't see this panel, I can always click on my help icon up here. Now already I've noticed that my interaction ratio has come down below 1.0, but it is in yellow, which indicates that there's still a warning associated with this connection. Now before I go ahead and address that, I'm going to scroll down and adjust some of the parameters for my stiffener to get it to an area where I'd like to detail it a little bit better. So I'm going to choose full depth stiffeners. I would like to pull my stiffeners inside my column flange, so I'm going to make them a little bit shorter. We'll go with four and a half inches. And everything's looking fine. I'm going to go back to my results area to see where my warning is being produced. And if I scroll down, I can see that I have a warning produced here. So it's recommending a minimum weld size of a quarter inch weld or four sixteenths, and I've provided so far three sixteenths. So I've received a warning. And I'm going to increase my weld size now to a quarter inch weld. And now my connection design is passing. It's in green, which means that I have no errors or warnings associated with this particular connection. Now, if I'm satisfied with my results, I'll go ahead and click on the save icon. And the transfer stiffeners are now saved to this joint. And I can close out of my connection pad. I can see that that information has now been reflected appropriately in the RAM connection input dialog to reflect the status of the new connection design. This concludes our process for assigning moment connections to all of our beam column flange joints in our model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.